Welcome to this overview of PXF Geolite. So here I've made a scene in Nuke. I've got a few uh, items that I've imported with Read Geos. I've got a couple spheres, a card, and so on. Every single item has shaders on it. So for example, the statue has a diffuse and a specular shader. The chrome ball has a diffuse and a reflection shader and so on. Everything uh, is collected into a scene and that scene is fed into a scanline render. If we look at the output of the scanline render, everything is black. That's because I don't have any lights in my scene. So let's add a geolite. We go to the PXF menu, PXF lights, PXF geolite. Here we go. Geolite doesn't do anything on its own. It's expecting geometry. So we'll create a sphere, for example. And you got to make sure your geometry is fairly low res because there's going to be one light per vertex. So if we look at a sphere here, we've got a lot of vertices here. <laughs> so that's going to create way too many lights for us. So we need to lower the amount of vertices by uh, lowering the rows and columns here. So we'll set that to five by five, make that real low res. And we're going to set our viewer to a wireframe that's going to help us down the line. So put my mouse over the viewer, push S on the keyboard, go to the viewer uh, preferences, go to the 3D tab and change our display to wireframe. Here we go. And we're going to connect the sphere to the geo input of the geo light. And if we put our viewer on it, now we see that Geolite created one light per vertex. So that's pretty cool. And now we can send the Geolite into our scene and look at the result. So now we've got a little ball of light here in the middle of the scene. That's pretty bright. We can move the Geolite with an axis. We can't move the sphere with its internal uh, transform here. So if you need to move anything, you need to create a separate axis to move the entire light. So we'll create an axis for that. And connect it to the axis input. Now we can scale it and move it. So now it's bigger and we can put it to the side. Here we go. So now we're lighting our scene with an emulation of a china ball, a big volume volume of light here. And uh, it looks okay, but it's not perfect. We don't have the reflections or the shadows. That's because we're using a scanline render. We should be using a ray render. So ray render comes built into Nuke. It is a Nuke's built-in uh, ray tracing node. So we're gonna use a ray render instead. Here we go. So that looks better. Now we have shadows and reflections. So that looks better. So right now we're having one point light per vertex. If we need more lights, we can add more vertices to our sphere. So if we go back on our light, if I change the number of rows and columns, let's say 10 by 10, notice that new lights didn't appear. So even though my sphere has more resolution, I don't have more lights yet. I gotta go back to my geo light here and go in the light rig tab and push sample geometry, and that will create all the lights at every vertex. So now we have 92 lights in our rig, one for every vertex of the sphere. If we look at our result now, we should have softer shadows because we have more lights. So notice that at 10 by 10, 92 lights, we have soft shadows. If we make our sphere really low res, let's say three by three, and push sample again this will this will give us really low res lighting so we only have a few lights we have eight lights in our rig so we don't have a lot of detail in our shadow so to have nice looking shadows we need more lights but it's going to cost us more render time so let's go back to let's say uh, eight by eight and push sample geometry again here we go. We can, of course, adjust the uh, shadow mode. So if we have a uh, card with a texture on it, for example, you will notice that the entire card is blocking the light. If you want the texture to block the light, 
then you need to switch the shadow mode to full alpha and now the texture will block the light instead of the polygons or the geo itself so that's gives us more accurate shadows but it's more expensive to render so we'll go back to solid by default we can of course uh, change the geometry so if we use some other geometry for example a cube make sure it's pretty low res so we're gonna set it to let's say three by three and we connect it our geolite should resample if we disconnect the input so that's done automatically and now i have got 96 lights in my rig if i set that to two by two and push sample again now i've got 26 lights in my rig and i should have different lighting now here we go we can also use a non-nuke geometry so here i've imported a bit of geo from another software so this is just a random bit of geo here you gotta be very careful if you import geometry from other software you gotta make sure that it's really low res and you don't you only have a handful of vertices on it so uh, decimate the geometry before you export it for nuke and if i connect that here like so so now each vertex has a light Again, you cannot move the geometry using its own transform controls. You got to do it from the axis here. So let's uh, put that upright. And if we look at our result here, now we're lighting with our teardrop. All right, let's go back to the sphere. Of course, you can uh, change the color of the light so you can uh, adjust the color of the light itself you can change the intensity so if you need this to be darker you can lower the intensity or make the light brighter you can change the fall off so the fall off is how the light reacts with distance so the default fall off is cubic if we turn off fall off then light will not fade by going farther away so now we need to bring our intensity down quite a bit. Let's set the color back to white. Here we go. So no fall off means that light will not fall off with distance. So something close or far will be lit the same. If we choose linear fall off, then something that's twice the distance will be half the intensity. So now we have to make this brighter. If we set it to quadratic, it's a logarithmic and cubic is uh, also logarithmic. Make sure your intensity is bright enough because the fall off dies very quickly. If you have a big scene, you might need to have hundreds or even thousands in the intensity value here. So I'm pretty happy with this. Emissive object is the actual geo, whether or not you want to see it. So if you disable the emissive object, then it will be invisible of course it will be invisible to camera but it's also going to be invisible to reflective objects so you gotta pay attention to that you can by default kill the alpha on it this is because if you're using the full alpha shadow if the object is opaque the light won't be able to go through the light itself through the geo so by default we make it transparent if you don't want it transparent you can turn that off but make sure you're using solid shadow mode you can change the color of the object without affecting the light. So if we want our object to be a different color than our light bulbs, we can change that. We can, of course, change the intensity. So make it darker or brighter if needed. So there you go. That was an overview of PXF Geolite. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.